I know that everybody was excited to see Madame Vice President, Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris, today. <laughs> yes! But in life, this is what we teach our kids, life is always throwing curveballs, and sometimes you just gotta go with the flow. So, Vice President Kamala was supposed to get in her vice presidential chopper and uh, fly from D.C. to New York to be here with us. But because of the weather back there, she could not fly out to be with us in person. So, I know, and it's so like, I, I know I was like so disappointed, but here's the thing, you know, because I think it's like uh, the, the military, the, the Air Force would not- Air Force, yeah, they wouldn't clear her to take off. It wouldn't clear her to take off. But when you're the second most powerful person on the planet, they don't let you fly if there's anything. So they wouldn't clear her to take off, but the rest of us, they fly us, it don't, they don't care what. <laughs> Let me how many times you been on a plane and they're like, sorry, we lost an engine, but we'll be there shortly. <laughs> I don't know how many, oh, you know, I don't know how many times I've been on a plane sleeping good and then the lights come on, the little put your seatbelt lights on and it'll be the pilot. He'll go, I didn't mean to say anything, but what, you know, one of our wheels flew off. <laughs> We're flying over the Atlantic, but we'll be safe. Just buckle up, we'll be all right. <laughs> and then they give me Biscoff cookies and they say, just be. <laughs> That's how they treat the rest of us, the regular folks. But when you're not running the country, it's just they give you any kind of announcement and you're supposed to sit there. They let people fly earlier this year. Remember that? And the door flew off, the dead gone. <laughs> door flew out the plane. So yeah, that's the way we get treated when we're regular. <laughs> they still flying. No, no thing on, we about to land. Y'all better sit back. <laughs> We still gonna fly this plane. But Kamala Harris, no, you stay put. We need you protected. We don't need you. Oh my gosh. That is the main thing. We were, you know, it's so funny, John, because we were looking forward to the vice president coming to our studio. This is like a big deal to have the vice president stop by. And let me tell y'all how much of a big deal it was. Everybody cleaned up. I don't know if y'all could walk across <laughs> this floor. You could walk across this floor with your shoes off. The, um, if you noticed, when you were standing outside, the sidewalks were cleaned off. <laughs> this is probably the only block in New York that has no dog poop on it, I'm telling you. <laughs> it is so clean. This is the only place you could walk, right in front of this studio. You don't have to look down at all. I stepped in some gum, but I know at least they tried to scrape it off. It, <laughs> it is so nice, it, but... You know, I guess I have to think, because I always teach Jeffrey, you have to look at the bright side of everything. So things happen, you know, you can't stay in the dumps. And I guess there is a bright side to Vice President Harris not being able to make it. And that is because I didn't get her nothing. Like, I didn't get her a gift. <laughs> and I have, I had been knowing this for the longest time, but I didn't, I didn't get her anything. I didn't get her flowers, I didn't get her a candle. I didn't get any bad salt, Epsom salt, nothing. I didn't get. Because I was trying to think of what could I get? A vi the, the woman, like the most powerful second person in the country, you know, in the world. And I know um, I got a suit in there. My Auntie Bunny crocheted a whole new suit for <laughs> vice president. And she attached the flower with it and a hat to match. Uh, so I might just give her that and put my name on it. <laughs> Tell her I crocheted it. Oh, my God. But, it, you know, it's so funny. Everybody, everybody's a little disappointed because everybody was on their best behavior because the whole staff is dressed up extra nice today. They're dressed up like it's Easter Sunday because normally... <laughs> you know, on a talk show, producers and everybody, we pretty much put on sweatsuit and sweatpants, and so they now have on suits, which they don't dress like this all the time. Even one of my producers, Charlie, he didn't have a suit. He put the suit jacket on that he got married in. So, that's... <laughs> When I tell you... <laughs> Charlie! <laughs> so, so, Charlie's... Me that is Tara, who Charlie is married to. Tara is our, is our senior script supervisor, and Charlie is our producer. So, Charlie, was this wedding day as... as was, was this day as important as your wedding day? Uh... I was equally nervous about tripping on both days, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Charlie. And you looked, when I told Charlie, I said, Charlie, you, you got your suit on. He said, I wore this on my wedding day. And I feel bad, because I feel like we should like do your second like wedding, you know, renewal, vow renewal. Are you ordained? Renewal. <laughs> <laughs>
But we can do that, because we got the show. But you know what, Charlie? We gonna send you and Tara to Melba's uh, oh, wow. to have dinner for two. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Thank you. You can either get the oxtails, Charlie. You look like you ain't had no oxtails. Get them oxtails. Oh, I, I will. <laughs> With the mac and cheese and the, and the yams. And, and some of that, and, and then, what's that cake that Melba's got? The red velvet? Oh, it's the red velvet? I like the coconut cake, though. Get that coconut, coconut cake, cake is everything, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie, get the right, coconut yeah. cake. You and Tara. <laughs> and tell her you playing that all along. This yeah, is just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. But now, everybody, literally everybody on staff, this is the way they were looking. Everybody had on suits. And now everybody's returning their outfits, OK? <laughs> that line at Macy's is going to be around the block with... <laughs> All of the staff taking back their clothes. They got, and I done seen them, they got tags coming out the doggone, <laughs> coming out the back. And, uh, it, it, you know, it's so funny, Secret Service, they had to come and sweep the whole place. So they were in my dressing room when I found out that the vice president was not coming. So they were in there shooting the breeze with me. They were asking me about Hollywood, and we were talking, and I had questions for them. One thing they told me, do you know, because they take care of every former president and, uh, and sitting president uh -huh. and vice president, but when they're, when they're not serving any longer, the, the uh, former president has Secret Service for the remainder of their life. And then they take care of the kids until they're about 16. And after 16, you sign off. Because uh, after 16, do you really want Secret Service following you around <laughs> with your little activities and everything? So they, 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 uh, <laughs> they don't do it. And I said, well, do y'all take care of the grandkids? They don't do the grandkids. I said, what about so Cousin Juki? Somebody, you know, no. <laughs> A, a political science lesson from Sherry. I know, just because I always wondered that, yeah. you know, since I'm paying for it, I wanted to know. <laughs> and, and, you know, so they, they, so we were talking back and forth, and then the a little alert thing went off on his phone. And when he went to the corner, he said, uh-oh. Now, when the Secret Service says, uh-oh, that's not a good feeling at all. <laughs> and I said, what? And he said, well, you might as well see it. So he showed me his phone. And I said, I guess you don't understand the secret of the service. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, that's a classified, <laughs> like, because I, I watch Scandal. I know the kind of stuff yeah. you're not supposed to be doing. Yeah. <laughs> but that don't sound. <laughs> but his phone said the vice president isn't coming. And I said, you're not supposed to tell me that. He said, you're the host of the show. You, you need to know. So, uh, you know, John, I, I thought I was telling everybody, because I texted everybody. You knew before I did. I did, because I was over across the street. You know, we have a studio here. Our office right. is across the street. And I was looking out the window. They started lifting the barricades. And I said, wait, they're supposed to be putting megatometers or magnetometers or whatever the machines are called down. Why are the barricades getting lifted right. up? I said, oh, she ain't coming. Yeah, oh, you knew. Yeah, because when you came, they had all of the barricades on the street. They shut the street down, and uh, nobody could get through. The entire block was shut down and barricaded. It was cops on cops on cops outside. For a single woman, I was... I'm, let me tell you, look at all them daggone cops. I, I called every single girlfriend I had. I said, y'all need to get down here on 26. <laughs> all these daggone police officers... My girlfriend said, I don't know if I want to say no police. Girl, they got a pension. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they got health care and every... Oh, my gosh. So they had the dog sniffing and everything. And I just... I still can't get over the fact that the Secret Service was in my room. So I, I was... I had to tell my glam team, uh, Theo and Rodney John, because they had the dog sweeping my room so they couldn't come in. And Theo, who is my uh, hairstylist, he said, well, where am I supposed to eat? I said, the vice president coming. He goes, yeah, but I'm hungry. Where am I supposed <laughs> to eat? The one thing I feel bad about y'all, though, is because we have this studio, and there's also a big studio downstairs. And whenever the Real Housewives do their reunion, they do it downstairs. So th they're shooting their reunion right now. But because the, the block was shut down, they had to rearrange their shooting schedule. It's the Real Housewives of Potomac. Potomac. Yes. So they had to rearrange their shooting schedules to accommodate the vice president. So instead of them showing up at 7 or 8 in the morning to get their makeup, they made them come at 4.30 in the morning. You know Karen Hoover was mad. <laughs> <laughs> So, and so, whenever the Real Housewives come, they got a great craft service. They got a lot of food. And uh, usually, we like to go downstairs and sneak down there and eat a lot of their food, because it's so good. But they were so mad, uh, they was like, nope, go back upstairs. <laughs> they said, go eat your vice presidential snack. So, I, I know... 
Look, see, and they, I, I don't know if they know yet, but I know when they find out, they gonna be mad. But I, if they knew, they would add us to one of the episodes. Sherry played us. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Did it, you know all of those Real Housewives? And, and let me tell you, Candace, Robin, and Giselle were texting me last night, like, really? We gotta start our glam this early because of y'all? But Sorry, that, ladies. Okay, well, I say to the ladies, I know y'all had to start at 4.30, but them, their hair is gonna look amazing <laughs> by the time. Y'all gonna look good. Oh, my God. So we, we had to find China out for the vice president. We did. Look, we had to find China out. This is what it was said, Sherry, and it's our little fine China that we're gonna do. So, but I guess I'm gonna use it when um, she comes here. Or maybe, like, Lenny Kravitz might oh. wanna have tea or something like that. <laughs> Just save this. Give me my regular mug since the vice president's not coming. Give me the regular mug that I slurp on it. <laughs> With the straw. Now I can go back to being my ratchet self. Oh, my gosh. And I'm so sorry uh, to the vice president's sorority who all showed up. We got any AKAs in the building? <laughs> y'all better ski. Oh, my gosh. I I'm so sorry, because I know y'all showed up to support your sister, because uh, Vice President Kamala is an AKA. Thank you for coming. We're going to give you a good time. But I'm hearing that uh, Vice President Kamala taped a message for us. Take a look. Sherry, I was so looking forward to being there with you and your audience today, and I just, I look forward to being with you in person sometime soon. And please take care. And to everyone, thank you for all that you are. I'll see you soon. Oh. I thank you. Kamala, we love you, and guess what? I'm gonna be here until May, so you can still come. <laughs> It will not be snowing in April and May, so please come back. Oh, I like it. She's a warm and fuzzy. Now, you know, because, you know, she called me yesterday on the phone. Oh. Yeah, Vice President. Because oh. before they said, they called, they texted me, and they said, the Vice President wants to just have a word with you before she comes on the show. And yeah, I, and I said, oh, my God. And they said she's going to be calling from an unblocked number. And I said, okay, well, that's not going to work for me. Um, <laughs> because I don't know if that's a bill collector or one of my ex-husbands. <laughs> so, I don't, I, I told her, I said, I don't answer no numbers from an unblocked number. I don't, I don't. Unblocked numbers, nothing good. It's never nothing good. And so they said, so I forgot. Uh, and I, so they said, well, when she's, <laughs> they said, well, when she calls, we're trying to figure out her schedule because she's in back-to-back -back conferences with the president. And I said, I, okay, we can't be friends, me and Kamala Harris. <laughs> but <laughs> when somebody says, I'm in back-to-back -back meetings with the president. But they said, well, when are you available to talk to her? And I said, well, I have an audition for a movie. And then I got my therapy appointment at two, but I, don't, I gotta be in the right mental space. So I can't change that. <laughs> <laughs> So, but she called it, the, the call, call came in about seven o'clock at night and I forgot. And you know, when you don't know somebody important is gonna call and you just answer the phone, the phone rang and it was blocked. And I said, yeah, who this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I want you to know when you call them from an unblocked number, you're not welcome to call me. <laughs> I need you to know that. So if you're gonna say, you, you know, we looking for you, you got a bill, I want you to know you're not welcome over here on this line. And, and she says, hi, Sherry. And I said, yeah. And she said, this is Vice President Kamala Harris. <laughs> it's amazing how you switch up. I was like, yeah, hi, hi. <laughs> So, uh, so I am here, and, and I am here until May, Vice President, and I'm so glad you're coming back. She said she was coming, right? Yes, she said she was coming. <laughs> Woo! So today, today is February 29th, right? Today is February. So yes. This is, so this means that it is Leap Day, which is, this is a day that only comes around every four years, which means it's a special day for Ja Rule, because Ja Rule was born on February 29th. So it's his birthday today. So Ja Rule actually only gets to celebrate his birthday once every four years, which means that he is actually 12 years old. <laughs> That's exactly. And I would say, Ja Rule, you get, you such a big boy, you are a big boy. <laughs> 12 years old, tw 12 years old. He's just now, he can do his laundry on his own, Ja Rule. <laughs> 12 years old, Ja Rule. He can finally join that soccer team that he always wanted to. <laughs> and Ja Rule is from New York, so he can ride the subway all by himself. <laughs> all by himself. 
and Ja Rule, he was a guest on our show and he was so wonderful. Happy 12th birthday, Ja Rule. <laughs> next year, next year, you gonna be a senior. <laughs> next year, you gonna be a teenager. And, and what else is going on in the news? Oh, oh, social media influencer, Jada Cheeves. She's being called out by her own son. So Jada posted to Instagram that she's not wearing false eyelashes anymore. And she said her five-year-old son, Loyal, told her that she looks like a boy without them. Y'all take a look. I sat and took all my lashes off. Why would I do that? Now you look like a boy, I'm not gonna yell. You are so mean for that. Sorry. I mean, that's your truth. I have to respect it. So you think I should get my lashes back? Yeah. But, 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 why don't you get the up ones, not the down ones? Oh, uh, not the bottom lashes. Yeah. You don't like bottom lashes? I hate them. <laughs> the fact that kids could, you know, they are able to express their feelings. I wish I would have said that to my mother. I wish I would have told my mother I didn't like anything on her, on her body at all. But this was so funny. I gotta respect you, Jada, and Loyal, because you let Loyal speak his truth. Because if nobody else is gonna tell you the truth, your own kids will tell you the truth. They will tell you. Jeffrey says to me all the time, mommy, like, mommy, put your wig back on. He'll say that. <laughs> I let nobody tell me that. But the, the truth of the matter is, guys, clap if you like those big lashes that we are wearing now. No. Okay, oh, damn. <laughs> It's so funny because women, we wear these big lashes, but ladies, I know, fellas, we do it because it opens up our eyes. I love lashes, but the men do not like those lashes. They're, they're like cat paws, Sherry. They're they like, are, they're like, they, I call them, you know what I call those lashes? The Lunel lashes, because Lunel, <laughs> my friend Lunel, she wears the big, she wears the big lashes. Sometimes you can't see her eyes because the lashes are huge. But you know, I know that men don't like them, but we, we do like them, you gotta give us a little grace. Maybe we won't wear them on the bottom, like Loyal said. <laughs> We won't put them on the bottom. But Jada, don't you worry, because these kids say whatever they come to your mind, you look good with or without lashes, girl. You're looking amazing. <laughs> Loyal. <laughs> uh, Snoop is one of the greatest rappers today. Yeah. But Snoop, in addition to, gosh, we've grown up with Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg, yeah, wow. In, uh, in addition to his impact in hip hop, he's making a greater impact to the kids of his community. So in 2005, Snoop created a nonprofit for inner city kids called the Snoop Youth Football League. And this teaches the kids the value of teamwork, good sportsmanship, and self-respect, all while playing football. And since the start, Snoop said that his organization got 12 kids into the NFL. All right? 12 kids. And he got 100 kids in Division I schools. And, yeah. and he says that they have produced lawyers, doctors, police officers, they even have a Rhodes Scholar. Congratulations to you. Keep giving back to the community because you are making a change and you helping so many young kids do better. We're gonna have a good time.